I'm walking up to the entrance to Bretville Surlay's cemetery. This contains, again, a lot, like many, many, many Canadian graves. This contains graves of those who died from different parts of the fighting earlier, as well, including some of those who were killed at the Abbey d'Arden. So we're going to go take a look at those graves and a few others while we're here at the other major Canadian cemetery in Normandy. So Brettville has casualties from, like I said, many different parts of the fighting. Majority are from the push to Caen and mostly from after that, right? We're south of Caen now. We're along the path of Operation Totalize. So that would have made sense to have these casualties from this time period. And there again is the ubiquitous her name liveth forevermore, or the stone of remembrance, and then the cross of sacrifice. So as part of this trip, I wanted to document the graves, or the remembrance of all of those who were murdered at the Abbey d'Arden. Those that are buried here in Breadville are all buried in the same row. So beginning with Thomas Windsor, who was a lieutenant of the Sherbrooks. George Millard, member of the North Novas. Walter Doherty, another member of the North Novas. Corporal Joseph McIntyre, it went by the name of Fan or Fa, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, probably Fan based on the name. We have Harold Phillip of the Sherbrooke Fusiliers, another tanker who was captured and murdered. We have George McNaughton of the North Novas, who was 21 years old when he was murdered. Thomas Mott, also of the North Novas. His epitaph reads, A beloved son and husband who died that we might live forever remembered by his family. He was 25. Private Hugh McDonald of the North Novus, age 24, when murdered. His epitaph reads, Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Roger Lockhead, Sherbert Fusiliers. Ivan Crow, also of the North Novus. Raymond Moore of the North Novus. His epitaph reads, Our dear son Raymond, you live with us in memory always, mother, father, family. He was 29 years old when he was murdered. So also at Brettville you have the members of Worthington Force who fell, including their commander, Donald Worthington, who of course died on August 9th, 1944. Causes somewhat disputed. Uh, I have a live stream I did with Mike Bechtold about this that covers this in depth. But you can check that out and learn more. So next to him, unfortunately, is his brother, John Worthington, Major John Worthington, also of the BCR, who dies on August 18th, 1944. So just after Tractable. So again, just wandering and looking at the different people buried here, and you have a W.C. Hugson, uh, the Royal Canadian Engineers, who unfortunately was killed August 26, 1944, age 23. It says in um, his epitaph he was awarded the Belgian Croix de Guerre in 1940. I haven't the slightest idea how that would have happened. He would have been 18. So, doesn't look like a Belgian name to me, so this one I'm going to have to dig on. And if I find information, which I'm sure I will, I will share. I was able to access Lieutenant Hugson's service record, giving us the details of how this happened. He actually initially served with the Cameron Highlanders of Ottawa, both prior to the war and the militia, also on active service from September 1939 to the end of August 1940. He was discharged from the Cameron Highlanders to attend the Royal Military College in Kingston, actually, thus gaining the officer rank uh, after his graduation in 1942 when he joined the Royal. Canadian engineers. He was awarded the Croix de Guerre from Belgium uh, posthumously. So it was not 
awarded anything to do with service during 1940. That is simply the name of the Croix de Guerre that was given by the Belgium government in exile during the war. So just like it, Benny Brettville has can loan officers. So you have Lieutenant P. Duclos, who was attached to the King Shropshire Light Infantry, who was killed June 28, 1944, at age 33. And he's buried next to another can loan officer, Lieutenant R.B. Arthurs, who was attached to the Duke of Cornwall's Light Infantry, is killed on July 11, 1944. So there is Canlone and various cemeteries throughout Normandy as they played an important role in British units from Normandy to Market Garden through into the Reichswald or the Rhineland and through to the end of the war. And there's also RCAF members buried here as well. You have a TA Bug who was a pilot, I'm not sure which squadron, I'll have to look that up, who was killed August 12th, 1944 at age 24. And he's buried right next to an unknown soldier. Again, just a Canadian regiment known unto God. Probably the only identifiables left were a shoulder flash that said Canada. So it looks like section 22 here at Bradville is mostly British. If not entirely, it could be missing one or two, but it looks like they're all from British units. Uh, the East Lancashire unit, A.H. Skinner, age 29, dies during first day of total eyes. Same for R. Smith, age 20, dies the same day. You have a J. Kiernan, Lance Corporal, the Black Watch, dies first day of total eyes, age 24. Royal Artillery and behind him, several. K. Tate, and an E.T. Orchard, an F.E. Kemp. From the Northamptonshire Yeomanry, D.A. Coakley. And it goes on. Many British are buried here. Looks like from the first couple of days of total eyes and tractable, units attached to the 1st Canadian Army. So it shows the cemeteries don't always have what to expect and to Always take a look around to see what you see and notice, because it looks like we have a British section and what is labeled a Canadian War Cemetery. So it's good to remember that and also visit those. And at the back we have some from Air Force. We have a J.M. Hart, the Royal New Zealand Air Force. He dies on the 19th of August, 44, age 28, an unknown soldier. No identifiables whatsoever. An airman of the RAF, no identifiables whatsoever. And another right next to him. So this plot has Brits and a Kiwi in it, and possibly who else knows. You just look up and see lots of maple leaves yet again. It's also in amongst the Canadians here at Brettville is members of the RAF, um, also mixed together. I believe I've found the crew of one plane. One, two, three, four, five, six. I found six that die on the same day from different nationalities and air forces. So we have an HCW Nash of the RAF as a navigator dies June 20th, 1943, age 31. And then we also have a WG Brown, who is a wireless operator, air gunner, dies the same day. J.E. Lewis, RCAF, age 20, same day. Sergeant J. Sutcliffe, air gunner, same day, age 22. Jay Watson, pilot. RAF, June 20th, 1943, age 29. And Sergeant G.W. Rockwood of Newfoundland, who dies the same day at age 23 of the RAF. So this is a year before the landings 
So my guess is they went down somewhere in the area. I was able to find information on the aircraft this crew flew. They're part of 10 Squadron RAF flying a Halifax with the serial number J as in Jig, D as in Dog, 109. They crashed near Brettville sur Odon, southwest of the city of Caen, and the crew was initially buried in Caen itself. Upon my visit to the Brettville Cemetery, I missed the grave of William McKay, which was in a separate row from the rest of the crew and why I did not see it upon my initial visit. There was a full complement of seven crew members aboard when it went down. So here's another one that caught my eye, not, not because of the Jewish faith, right, which was a very much a minority in Canada at the time, uh, but of the unit, Canadian Grenadier Guards, this is 4th Armoured. They come online just before totalize. So there's going to be a lot of 4th Armoured guys in Brettville. Just discovered another grave towards the back here. That's got me stumped. Uh, a soldier who's unidentifiable of a Canadian regiment who dies May 22nd, 1945. So the war is over in Europe. I'm standing in Brettonville, and we have an unknown soldier. Now, is that a mistake or an accident? I don't know. So much like Benny, Brettville is actually closer to a smaller village that actually was the scene of a lot of fighting called Syntho. It's named after Brettville sur Lays, which is off in that direction, down closer to the river. As you can see, it slopes and then there's high ground off in that direction. So Syntho is actually up this way, right here. And it's just down this road is connecting to it and running the back of the cemetery. So you can see the river valley all along here. And Breadville sur had to be taken just like many of these other villages and towns in the area. So I came back to Breadville sur military cemetery. So the lighting will be different than when I was here last, which when the sun was going down. So back here in the morning. I wanted to highlight a few more graves here. So this is one Gerard Doré of the Fusiliers de Montréal. He was killed around the fighting just before spring on Verrier Ridge. Uh, around those farms we looked at and he was only 16 years old when he died and this is his final resting place here at Brittville. And here's a grave that highlights the story of many in the Canadian Army. It is one C.L. Gillis. He is American. Served with the North Shore. Killed on August 10th. Part of Total Eyes at age 20. Probably would have enlisted before Pearl Harbor. Or lived in Canada at the time, not sure, but I can look that up afterwards. Gillis was born in Connecticut and moved to Nova Scotia around age four, where he lived until the time of his enlistment. It appears that his mother moved back to Connecticut after the war, as his father had died in the mid-30s. Here's another American, a J.H. Farrell of the Black Watch, killed July 27th. Age 35. So after the advance of Very Ridge by the Black Watch. So here we have the grave of Philip Griffin. He was put in charge of the Black Watch during the charge over Very Ridge when there was issues with the artillery and timing and after many other commanders of the unit had been killed. His death was and still remains the subject of quite a lot of controversy about the whole attack and who was to blame. Simmons blames him for the attack failing. So this is the grave of Lieutenant Colonel Stuart Cantley. He was CEO of the Black Watch, killed just before that advance over the ridge. The Black Watch leadership took a heavy hit on the first day of Operation Spring.